Okay, and we are back. Let's call this part two of our 30th guitar Q&A live stream. Uh, and let's do this thing while uh, we are repopulating our audience. I want to say thank you for being here. Hey, beginning guitar lessons. We're, we're back, man. We're back. Uh, I always like to add a little something into the into the chat. Um, hey, everybody! While while we are uh, gathering back up again, um, now's the time to grab your guitar because uh, let's do this. Uh, play along, sing along. Um, we'll I'll give you guys a few minutes to jump in. Got a, a bunch of people already. Fantastic. Um, for today's song. You do not need a capo. You do not need an F chord. You do not need a bar chord. Uh, you know, you need a couple of easy chords, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have fun here. So, uh, hey, Susan. Hello, Jasper North. Hello, Scott, Johnny, Bod. Welcome, you guys. Um, so now is the time to grab your guitar. Uh, the song we're about to do. What you need for this song, I'm going to write this nice and big. Why not? You need D as in Delta, G as in golf, E minor, and then back to D again. So what I'm going to, the way I'm going to write this, I'm going to hold this up. If you already have your guitar, I encourage you to have a pick handy. I uh, grab a pencil or pen, but I'll tell you what, you might not even need it because this is so easy. Okay, take a look here. I'm holding up in front of the camera. Those are the, the uh, chords you need for this song. We're going to do a D for four counts, G for four counts, E minor for four, back to D for four. Now watch out. Those four Ds at the end go right into the four Ds at the beginning. So you're going to be on the D chord for eight counts altogether, right? Eight counts. The way we're going to strum this mystery song, I haven't even told you the name of the song yet, or the performer. Uh, the way we're going to do this is, I think the boom chick strumming is appropriate. We're going to play it just a little bit, just a little bit slower than the, uh, the original. Nothing wrong with that. You can always pick up the speed and go faster. So if you are just joining us, uh, grab your guitar. This is, this is the time. Play along sing along i'm gonna just do a quick tune up just in case okay after all that after all that uh teasing of what we're gonna do today's song ladies and gentlemen uh made famous by jackie wilson the song called higher and higher as in your love is lifting me higher and higher i chose a song number one great song the great performance by Jackie Wilson. Uh, number two, like I said, that is the whole song. D, G, E minor, D. Okay. Now we can get as fancy as we want, but this song basically has a nice boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick. Your love is lifting me higher, right? Um, and pretty straightforward. Okay. You got your guitar? You got a pick, excellent. Um, so I'm gonna talk about it for one more minute, but then we're gonna jump in and do it. Now I'm gonna take Jackie Wilson's perfectly good 1967 R&B tune, and yes, it's gonna sound a little folky, a little bluegrassy the way I'm gonna play it here, but that's just to get us all up and running. I encourage you, um, outside this live stream to crank it up nice and loud and play along with his version of the tune, strum it however you want to strum it, but let's get you up and running. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do here is four boom chicks on each chord. And when I say boom chick is my D open fourth string, the D string, boom chick, boom chick, boom chick, two, three, Okay, I'm not even using the two fat strings at all. Change it to a G chord. Sixth string first. 
boom, chip, boom, chip, boom, chip, boom, chip. E minor, same force, boom chicks, also focusing on the fat string, boom, chip, boom, chip. And the sequence ends back in the D chord. Okay, it also begins the D chord, remember? So I'm gonna stay in that D chord for eight boom chicks all together. Beginning guitar lessons is asking what minor, uh, what pentatonic scale would you use? Excellent question. Should you want to jam along with some lead guitar? Point a finger at seven. Seven, uh, seven, ten, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, ten, seven, ten. That is what I call the headquarters pattern. Um, in this case, we're going to name this the D major headquarters pattern. The song's in the key of D. When I go seven, ten, my pinky is on the 10th fret of the fat six string, and that's where you find the root note of a major pentatonic scale, specifically when you do the headquarters pattern. You're okay with that? That's the note D, and that's my reference point for making this, or for calling this a D major pentatonic scale. Seven, 10, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, ten. B string, seven, ten. E string 710. Throw on that BB King box up at, uh, where's our BB? Oh, there we go. Uh, the BB King box, uh, middle finger, third skinny string 11, second string 1012, first string 1012, 11, 1012, 1012. That's the BB King box location for the song. And you guys already know the headquarters pattern, what I call the headquarters pattern, 710, 797. Okay, the D major pentatonic song. So here we go. Jackie Wilson, 1967, higher and higher post, I'm, I'm sure, a very traumatic shooting incident in 1961. So when you hear him singing his heart out in this tune, just remember, man, that guy, whew, he rose above it. Okay, so how about if I get started a little bit slowly, uh, I will strum through the chord progression. One last time, there's the chord progression. D, G, E minor, D. I'll strum through it, and then I will come in with my own take on the vocals of the tune. Okay, so on the count of four, you ready? Of course you're ready. Boom, chick, boom, chick. Here it comes. One, two, three, four. One more time. D of G E minor. Well, your love lifting me higher than I've ever been lifted before. So keep it up, quench my desire. And I'll be at your side forevermore. You know your love. Keep on lifting, lifting higher and higher. You know your love. Keep on lifting, lifting me high and higher. Now once I was downhearted, disappointment was my closest friend. But then you came and it soon departed. And you know he never showed his face again. You know your love lifted me higher. Lifted me Higher and higher, you know your love. Keep on lifting, lifting me high and higher. Okay, take a solo. Here we go. D, G, E minor. One more time. Here we go. D, G. 
Tyler. Back to the verse. I'm so glad I finally found you. Yeah, that one in a million girl. Now with my loving arms around you, I can stand up and face the world. You know your love will lift it, lift it. Be higher and higher. You know your love. Keep on lifting. Lifting. Be higher and higher. Okay, someone play us out. D. Last time. Slowing down. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, there you go. Jackie Wilson, nineteen sixty-seven, and of course he had a bunch of other hit songs in his career. Reet Petit. Uh, Lonely Teardrops, and I'm sure lots of other ones, too. Okay, thanks for your support, you guys. <laughs> Bod, Johnny Mo Basher. Everybody, your uh, your support is not lost on me. I appreciate that. Okay, so now you know a song all the way through, <laughs> right? You know the chords. You know at least one perfectly appropriate strum pattern. Nothing glamorous, but um, it's a vocal tune, right? It's a vocal tune. So whether it's you or someone in your life who's singing their heart out like Jackie Wilson, that's that's the you know, that's that's why we play the guitar, right? To create something bigger, right? Um, <laughs> Scott Rhodes. I, so that was not just me seeing all those letters in the air. Scott Rhodes says, look at all those letters in the air out there. <laughs> Except now it's cell phones, right? I don't know. I don't even know. Or now when you go to a concert, you guys might know this. They they lock up your cell phone. Uh, so I don't know what I don't know what to do at concerts anymore. You know. Anyways, okay. So thank you. How about you guys have been patient, uh, and you've been waiting for I'm sure with bated breath, the worst guitar book ever. I teased at this in our first hour. <laughs> um, so what is the worst guitar book ever? Okay, let's let's identify this, and and I'll explain, um, but I'm not joking. <laughs> okay, here we have it. That's it. That's the worst guitar book, man. Oh, I dread this book. Every once in a while, I'll have someone who shows up with a Mel Bay modern guitar method method, and I think, ah, uh, you know, maybe they pay their money and they got the book and they bring it to the first lesson. And I think, ah. Uh, because I, I do encourage my students, say, I say, oh, you know, you're coming for your first lesson, I'll see you Wednesday. Um, and especially if it's an adult, I'll say, hey, if you have any learning materials that you've gathered, you know, feel free to bring that stuff. And then I see them, Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method, I think, ah. So, okay, why am I being so mean? Now, Mel Bay is a perfectly good company, and I own lots of good, good Mel Bay products over the years. Nothing wrong with the Mel Bay company. And yes, there was a Mr. Bay, Mr. Mel Bay, um, who, uh, who started the company based in St. Louis, I believe, or in, in the St. Louis area, St. Louis, Missouri. The, Anyways, so why would I say such a thing about a perfectly harmless book? And why am I holding up volume two? If, if you know, was volume one great and volume two is the problem? I, I hear you. Bear with me. Okay. It's so boring. It's so boring. The only thing more boring would be for me to repeat that a third time. Uh, well, the fact that it's based on standard notation, that's not the problem. In, in a perfect world, we all should learn how to read music. Just don't do it with this book, you know? So what's the problem? Uh, part of it is the song choice. Uh, almost everything in this book um, are... Melodies that are not famous melodies. There are things, 
I mean, there might be some exceptions, but most of this is stuff that I've never heard before. Um, and, and that's just not inspiring. So you got a couple of strikes against it. You go to a guitar store or you're looking on Amazon, you think, well, I want to start from the beginning. The fact that it's written in regular notation with no tab. Again, they didn't, they didn't promise you any tab, but like some of you might say, ooh, ouch, wait, that's not the ideal book for me. The fact that most of the songs are things I've, I've never heard before. Not all of them, but yeah, most of them. Let's like strike two. <sighs> I don't know. Do you need a strike three? Um, How Leonard's version is just better. How Leonard Guitar Method book one is just better. Um, although the best beginner books on the market <laughs> are mine. You knew I was going to say that, right? That's what you want right there. The guitar week one, the guitar month one, the guitar year one. Um, but I digress. Okay. So why why am I holding up volume two? I'll tell you why. Because in my music shop, uh, I, I don't know how I got this book. I don't know. But I had a bunch of volume ones and a bunch of volume twos, what they call grade one and grade two. I think I, I think we had another guitar teacher working for us at some point, and that might have been his preferred book. I don't even remember. But guitar book one was so boring that no one got to book two. So to this day, I have like a dozen of these floating around, not floating around there, talking my bookshelf. And I don't know what to do with them because I'm never going to use them. I guess it's time to recycle. Anyways, okay, ladies and gentlemen, the worst guitar book in the world. I'm not joking. I'm just, I'm laughing and smiling because that's my nature. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go to the, you know, if you're, if you're inclined to get a book that's pretty, you know, focused on getting you reading notes from, you know, at an at a absolute beginner level and learning how to read guitar music. If you're bound and determined to get something from a major publisher, just not, don't, don't get this one. The How Leonard Guitar Method book one is the way to go. No tab. Um, but the song selection, trust me, it's better than the song selection here. And just the overall presentation, even the graphic design and the layout and everything. So how is this book still in print? I don't know. 1948. Hey, you know what? Who am I to judge? It's been around since 1948. Uh, okay. I just want to share that with you. You know, that's all. Yeah, Susan is suggesting having a fire sale, except that's like, you know, bur burning some food and then saying, oh, the, the food I burned, guess what? I'll give it to you at half off. You know, that doesn't work. You know, um, uh, oh, Stephen is asking a great question. Stephen says, when did tab come around? Excellent question. So just so we're all on the same page, tab is the method of writing instrument, not just for guitar, for really any fretted stringed instrument, especially banjo, mandolin. Um, and guitar, bass guitar. Uh, lines going across represent the strings, right? And the numbers, I'm gonna use my blues guide as an example. And the numbers tell you where to press down on those strings. Okay, so you guys know what tab is, right? Here's a fun fact. Tab is ancient. Tab came first. Tab, if you use tab, you are old school. You're going back to the roots of written stringed instrument music. What we consider real music, quote, quote, that came much later. So nothing nothing to be uh, ashamed about if you're using tab, which almost all of us do, right? Um, tab is the original. It's the OG notation, you know? Uh, yes, in a perfect world, we'd all be able to read everything. And I encourage you guys to learn how to read music. Um, most books you guys have probably found, most books are written in a bilingual sort of way, just like what I showed you where you have standard notation, real music, quote, quote, up top, and tab down below. So I don't know much about tab beyond that, beyond the fact that it, it's old, 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 it's ancient, and it came before, you know. Jerry Stilwell says combination piano and guitar books are really bad, yes, and they're expensive, right? The big, thick, you know, greatest hits of the 60s, and uh, they, okay, we've had this conversation before, but I'd love to have it again, because it's that Ooh, you want to scratch that itch. Um, tons of books way back when were written for piano players. And as the guitar became more popular, 
they began marketing them, the exact same book, to guitar players. But instead of rewriting it, they said, oh, no, this book is, is for piano and guitar. And what they did was they put the little guitar chord diagrams above the piano music and said, there, see, it's for piano and guitar. Smart marketing move, man, because we all bought those books, including me, right? You know, um, and but it leaves out an enormous amount of information, um, right? You know, especially if you have no experience reading piano music and all you have is the chord diagram, like, well, then what do you do, you know? So, uh, in sometimes it's all you have, or sometimes you get one for Christmas and, and I don't know. Or maybe there, there's only one songbook. Maybe you're a, a big fan of some not quite famous singer-songwriter from 1975. And all you've got is the piano, what they call PVG, Piano Vocal Guitar Book. And that's all you have. And uh, you just have to work with it. Sometimes you have to just work with it. Um, but that's where I come in. Me or hopefully any competent teacher. You say, look, I have all the lyrics. I have the chords in order above the lyrics. Now what do I do? That's the strum pattern Bible. You got to know how to strum the song, right? You need that's a missing piece of information. As a teacher, my job is to teach you a whole bunch of possible strum patterns, either with a pick or with bare fingers. And then we find the pattern that fits that song. Um, best case scenario is we find a way to um, figure out exactly not just something that's appropriate, but exactly how the guitar player is exactly strumming the song. But at a minimum, you learn a strum pattern that fits the song, and then you're up and running, as I said. Um, okay. I am scrolling. We have plenty of time here, but I always like to keep my eye. It's 6.30. Um, hey, how about if I say a few hellos? I just want to say a few hellos to maybe some people who joined us. Bama, number one. I see your question. We'll get to that in a minute. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks to a whole bunch of you. Puba John, uh, sounds like you might have to take off and have dinner. Yeah, I get that. But thank you for being here, you guys. Um, so I always like to, to say a few thank yous. The show's not over. Don't worry. But um, Stephen, many vibes. Jerry, Bod, A to Z, me. Uh, Susan, thank you guys for all being here. And thank you for beginner guitar. Um, uh, beginner guitar lessons for being our moderator. That's why his name is Blue. Um, Bod, it's time for uh, bedtime. <laughs> yeah, Bod, thank you for being here. You are five hours ahead of us, so almost midnight. Johnny, same thing in England. Um, so good night, England. Good night, Scotland. Uh, until next time. Remember, five o'clock, five o'clock uh, Eastern time here in the U.S. That's going to be our regular time moving forward. Oh, um, uh, looks like the poll results are in. Um, and uh, a solid 75% of voters. Uh, said an occasional Friday uh, live stream is fine with you. So great. Okay, so so we'll try that out sometime. Um, we won't do Friday and Saturday. I, I'll give you tons of advance notice, and we'll pick a Friday where it works, and um, and we'll do a Friday 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern live stream just for the fun of it. Why not shake it up a little bit? Um, how do you know about stuff like that when it happens? Follow me on social media, and I'm going to put this name in the chat. Uh, Instagram and Facebook. Head over to Instagram or Facebook. See what I just put in the chat there? Songbike, S-O-N-G-B-I-K-E. Just do a search for that term, Instagram or Facebook, and um, and follow me. And that's how you will get uh, notifications about stuff like that, about time changes or anything that that I feel is a positive educational experience on the guitar, you know? Um, uh, yeah, Bama number one, you're asking a good question. Um, how do you figure out what neck size is best for your hand? Um, is there a measurement of the hand? Is there a way? Uh, it, it's a perfectly good question. And I have, I have heard of, um, I don't, I can't be making this up. I have heard of, uh, contraption that you can reach and, and, and feel. And I don't remember, I don't know anything else about it. So I'm going to drop the, that part of the conversation until I have something concrete. But what I can say is 
yeah, you are stuck um, with trial and error. Uh, the good news is mo all of us can make a judgment very quickly. You guys have heard me say, I just don't like Gibson necks. I just don't. Sorry, Gibson. Uh, send back whatever you're going to send me. <laughs> Take it back. Sorry. Um, I, I really like Fender necks. I really like uh, Martin necks. Um, so, you know, if it means going to multiple guitar stores, that might be what it takes. Um, you know, plan B is to order something with a very clear return policy. And if you don't like it, you send it back. That I, I'm of the generation where that's that sounds like a weird way to do something, but that more and more that's the case. You know, you, you order it, you try it out, you don't like it, you send it back. Um, the old school ways, you just keep going to guitar stores. Oh, playing friends' guitars, you know. Uh, so I wish I could do, I wish I could be more specific. Um, we're all so different. Our hands are different. What we need or what we think we need is different. Um, but you know, you know what you like when you grab it. I, I, you know, and you know what you don't like right away. And if you don't like something, you're never going to like it. Um, at least you should assume that you don't, don't buy it. There's nothing, there's nothing more important than the feel of the neck. There's other important stuff, but nothing more important than the feel of the neck. It really, really isn't. Um, so, you know, bring a, bring a, a pencil and paper with you or make a note on your phone. Get a, get a little app on your phone where you can type in stuff. Take a few pictures. Um, ask ask at the guitar store. Hey, I don't like this neck, but but how how would I how do I know to avoid it in the future? Because hey, a lot of us do buy instruments online, and if it says C style neck, C shape neck, if it says you know chunky blah 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 or V shape or soft V or whatever, you want to know what they're talking about. Um, so you ask you know at the guitar store. Hey, what's this called? What's this called? Um, unfortunately that's you know it's a little labor intensive but when you find something you like then then you find it you know of course acoustic guitar is going to be a different feel than electric this might be obvious but don't expect to find an acoustic guitar that feels the exact same way as an electric guitar and vice versa in general electric guitar necks are skinnier um nylon string guitars are always big wide necks i've never found a nylon string guitar that isn't that way um, I'm not saying they don't exist, but, you know, uh, hang in there, hang in there. It's a great question. I wish, I wish I had a very specific, um, very specific thing to, uh, to tell you. <clears throat> okay. I'm reading through some of your comments here. Um, Stephen is asking how my son is doing. My son is doing great. He's on the college swim team, swimming his brains out. Uh, I love him. He's a hard worker. Uh, it shows up at practice and does what the coach says. Imagine if everyone did that. Show up, show up, do your job. Uh, it's something to be proud of. You show up and you do your job. I, I bet a lot of you show up and you do your job. <laughs> Hopefully you show up and you do only your job. But I, I bet there's a few out there who show up and do half of someone else's job too. Not, not ideal, you know. Um, okay, I'm scrolling a little bit, you guys. Bear with me. Uh, many vibes. I'm reading your question. Um, you're, you're saying, is it safe to say that the guitar is a harp and a drum in one? Interesting. Interesting. Um, you know, the way the guitar is used in, in popular music is, uh, is uh, you know, very often it's a rhythm instrument, right? The guitar is, uh, is making it extremely clear to everybody what the feel of the song is, you know? Um, and I'm a drummer, but, but I'll admit, like, the rhythm guitar, I mean, that's, in, in a lot of situations, the rhythm guitar is, is the, it communicates so much information that, that everybody else is, is simply accompanying the rhythm guitarist, you know? Um, So, so interesting how the guitar is, uh, is, is so universally accepted. 
it's portable, it's relatively inexpensive, at least it can be relatively inexpensive. Um, it's loud enough to sing a lot to sing along with, you know, it's warm and rich and deep enough to accompany the human voice. Nothing wrong with a mandolin. A mandolin is is missing that low end, right? Um, the banjo is missing that warm low end. Uh, that sounds that that adds an intimacy, you know. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, hey, I see a uh, a super chat um, from uh, from from a hey, beginner guitar. Let's see. He says, uh, "Oh, beginner guitar does not like." the the fender strat that he was gifted all right so what are you gonna do with it man you're gonna you're gonna give it give it away you're gonna pass it on you know pay it forward uh beginning guitar um his uh guitar tech that he does business with gifted him a, an american strat and uh he doesn't like it no which i get but believe me i i get it i mean i i uh you like what you like but the question is, what are you going to do with it, beginner guitar? What are you going to do with that strat? We all want to know. Anybody want a free strat? No, just kidding. Just kidding. Hey, where are those uh, hackers that joined us last week? Where'd they go? Just to recap, last week, some hackers joined our live chat. And uh, <laughs> they said, um, they said, Jonathan, this is in the chat. They said, how do you respond to accusations? That it's not really you, Jonathan, playing the guitar in all those videos. Huh? And I said, I welcome those accusations. That'd be awesome. That'd be, I would love that. I would love that to, to you know, to make national headlines. Like that guy is so good. It can't be him really doing that. It just can't. It's got to be trickery. Um, and then, yes, beginner guitar lessons. He uh, He sent them packing. And where are they now? I'll drop it because I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. But yes, we were hacked. We were hacked. And Willie Snyder says, "Congratulations on episode 30. That's right. Today is episode thirty. Oh, no, I, I didn't have it together enough to do too much in the way of bells and whistles for episode thirty. Heck, I'm drinking flavored mineral water. Nothing particularly celebratory." about this, although the flavor is kind of cute, tangerine wild strawberry, but don't go anywhere. Because I thought, well, what the heck? I gotta do something for 30th episode. I play the banjo for the 30th episode, why not? No, you didn't see that coming, right? <laughs> a five-string open back banjo. I know. Did I ever show you guys this before? I'll keep it quick. All right. Um, that's my song. I know, <laughs> I, I know more than one, but not that many more than one. So, so that's my go-to. Uh, that's the first half of the song called "Shortening Bread." Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Um, Five string open banjo, really four and a half strings, right? You got four strings that go all the way down the neck. See that? And the fifth string, which really is like a half a string. And the legend, the legend is that originally the banjo, by the way, this is a uniquely uh, American concept. Um, a, a half string that essentially drones along. You don't actually fret that string typically. You just let it drone. In this case, it's the, the high G note. Um, the legend is that uh, possum guts were used as banjo strings. And there's only enough possum guts for four and a half strings. Is that true? I hope so. I mean, not for the possum. I'm so sorry for the possums. Um, but that's a better story than no story, right? Uh, these are not possum gut strings. These are still strings. Oh, but. The banjo head here, this is a, um, I believe this is goat skin, um, just the way it was. Okay, so what's up with this banjo? Uh, this banjo is about 100 years old. Thanks for asking. Made by the Nelson 
banjo company, and I'm holding this up. I don't know if the light can pick it up. No, I don't think so. Engraved into the wood back here, which you can't really see, it says H.C. Nelson, Baker, Chicago. And the story that I heard was that the guy's name was actually Nielsen with an I tucked in there. But either they made the stamp wrong or maybe he wanted to disguise his identity. But it was Mr. Nielsen who made Nelson banjos. So this is a Nelson banjo, which if you're in the Chicago area, um, apparently the, these are, um, you're more likely to find a Nelson banjo in the Chicago area than outside. So whoever had it before me played the heck out of it. See how the finish is worn right off. I wish I could take credit for that, but no, that's how I got it. You can see their left hand was just cradling that banjo constantly. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful thing. You know, that is someone who played the banjo. So the neck is 100 years old. The rim or the pot, they call this the pot, that's 100 years old. The brackets um, were just breaking off. Um, so the brackets have all been replaced. The, the screws, right, those have all been replaced. The tailpiece is new. The goatskin head is, is relatively new. The bridge is new. The tuning machines, definitely new, you know. Um, actually, no, hold on a second. The fifth peg, that's new. Um, these, no, they're not, okay. Those are not new. Those are replacement, but they're, a similar style to what was on there. Anyways, there you go. There's my five string open back banjo. A typical bluegrass banjo has a, a wooden cover, so to speak, back there to help with the volume. Um, open back banjo is uh, was not intended to be a particularly loud instrument, but there you go. The style that I played for you guys just then is known as claw hammer, also known as frailing, F-R-A-I-L-I-N-G, frailing, also known as mountain style. And it's a weird style because the image, see my right hand here? The image is a knocking, like knocking on someone's door. It's a knocking kind of technique. That's the image that, that I was taught. I took one lesson and then sat on my sofa for a year and, and worked at it. Um, uh, and yeah, so fun. Playing the banjo is awesome. I tuned to an open uh, G chord. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So as the, uh, the default sound is a harmonious chord. Guitar's not like that, right? Guitar, your, your left hand, your fretting hand has to constantly be doing something. The banjo, check this out. I'm gonna play for a minute and uh, I'm gonna keep my left hand off the instrument. So, so this is, you know, right hand on the banjo. This music is coming out. I haven't even done anything with my left hand yet, right? Now, admittedly, I'm stuck with the G notes from a G chord until my left hand does something, right? But still, the guitars are like that, right? From day one, teachers say, okay, now with your left hand, boom, 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 you know? So, banjo, open G tuning. That makes the banjo a lot more accessible. I'm not saying it's an easy instrument, but it's an easy instrument. It's it's easy to, to get up and running. You know, it's easy to start making harmonious sounds compared to the guitar. Um, it begs the question, why is the guitar tuned that way? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, uh, so this whole claw hammer thing, I'll, I'll keep this quick and we'll get back to the six string guitar, which is why we're here. Claw hammer style is a weird style. I'm using my index fingernail percussively it's it's going my hand is going into the banjo head i'm definitely not plucking the way you think you'd pluck with your index right and my thumb is extended especially in the beginning the thumb mostly just stays that little fifth half string oh see how i've worn a little dirty spot there yeah that's that's from the thumb kind of do what thumbs do my thumb yeah okay and as you get more advanced the thumb jumps around does other stuff too that's called double thumbing okay should you take banjo lessons from somebody um you might not want to start with this because the right hand technique is so weird there's a, a style called up picking check out how accessible this is again i'm going to stay with just the open g that 
for sure. And there's, you can get a whole, you know, find, learn lots of songs played with the up picking style. Again, I'm still using just my thumb and my index, but it's more intuitive. The index finger is just then I was plucking like a single string up towards my chin. And then I was following that with the same motion, but um, strumming multiple strings lightly and answering it back with my thumb on the skinny fifth string. It's the boom chicka kind of sound. You hear that boom chicka boom chicka boom. So I guess all things being equal, I would teach someone how to do that first, just to get them up and running. Um, what I'm not good at, for sure, is the bluegrass style. I get the principle of it, but I've never worked hard on it. Plastic thumb pick on your thumb, metal finger picks on your index and middle. Uh, and then your work on speed, man. Three fingers, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. That's that classic banjo sound, right? Down, 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 that fast, speedy stuff, right? Scruggs style. Um, beautiful, loud, driving, classic. Um, and that's not my forte. Someday, someday. <laughs> my wife is saying, no, not someday, not someday. Uh, and that's why I, I pay rent on a music store <laughs> so I can do things on my own and and I'm uh, not here for my family. Hey, live to fly. Welcome. Okay, so uh, thanks for my little digression there. Um, I figured a 30th uh, live stream and bring something to the table like a banjo. Why not? Why not? Um, <laughs> Johnny Mobasher says, I'm struggling with a guitar and loving it is enough for me right now. Gotcha. Okay. Uh-huh. A to Z me, uh, someone had to bring up deliverance. I know, I know. Poor banjo, poor banjo. <laughs> Chris Great, mama's little baby is hooked on gluten. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I get the, uh, I get the uh, reference there. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby is hooked on gluten. <laughs> um, uh, beginner guitars is suggesting maybe. Maybe he would uh, give away that strat. Oh, hey, you know what? Let's not make any promises. We'll all sleep on. We'll all sleep on what you should do with that strat. We'll regroup next week. But hey, it, you know the beautiful thing is, if you didn't pay anything for it, that means it's an opportunity for you to make something happen in the world that might not not otherwise happen. You know, I'm sure there's lots of possibilities. Okay, my friends. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say we got about oh, a few minutes left. I'm looking at my little checklist here. Did we talk about a bunch of things on my agenda? We did. We did. Did we talk about everything? We did not. And that's all right, man. That's all right. Um, if you all have asked a question in the chat that I have not. Oh, Chris, I see your question. Okay, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, this is last call for questions, okay, until next uh, next Saturday, 5 p.m. Um, don't forget, I sometimes in the chat put in my affiliate link for Sweetwater. It's a way that you can support what we do right here. Just click on that link. And for a couple weeks, um, Sweetwater sort of knows that you came to their website from me. And should you buy something from Sweetwater in the next week or two, Sweetwater uh, makes a little contribution to support what we're doing right here. So if you're gonna shop at Sweetwater anyways, um, there you go, that's the link to click on. And um, and I always put that link in the description of these live streams too. So leave it if I clicked on it, excellent, excellent. Um, okay, so how about, let me get to Chris's question and then uh, Scott, I see your question, which is a good one too. Oh, we didn't officially do, uh, I didn't put the call out for dumb questions. Um, so, but Scott, I see your question and it's not a dumb question at all. Okay, Chris, let me read your question here. Uh, um, Chris is talking about the Neil Young song called Helpless. And Chris says, having trouble playing helpless as a solo person. You're fine with doing it with everybody else, like playing along with the recording of it and so on. But 
yeah, no, don't give up on that. Because that's, um, th well, yeah, of course, yeah, don't give up on it. But I'm curious, is, is your, the challenge playing and singing at the same time? Because I know the chords themselves are not particularly tricky chords. So maybe, maybe that's the challenge, playing and singing at the same time, um, which is totally understandable. Uh, but playing along with the recording is a great idea no matter what. So you are growing as a musician, you're benefiting from playing along with any recording, especially if you can keep up with it and just, you know, for there are lots of benefits you get from that. Uh, so so if, if you've spent some time doing that, great. But I'm curious as to maybe it's, you know, if you do it without the recording, either um, you're having a hard time singing along at the same time, which is understandable, or you have no intention of singing along. And then like a lot of songs, it just feels like, strumming chords and it doesn't sound like anything anymore right because some songs a lot of songs the guitar accompaniment taken out of context doesn't sound like much right um higher and higher our weekly play along song a little while ago yeah what i just did on the guitar doesn't sound like much so so maybe maybe that's what's what's going on right there you know um uh to be continued, let's, let's, I, I don't, that's a subject I'd like to come back to. I'd like, I'd like to hear more from you, is what I'm saying. Um, Scott is asking a great question. Uh, is learning another string instrument helpful when working on your guitar skills? 100%, 100%, yeah. Um, in some cases, it makes you appreciate the guitar. I was 19, 20, maybe 20 years old, played the guitar starting when I was 16. Fast forward to 20 years old, I tried a mandolin for the first time. I was horrified. I, I couldn't put it down fast enough. I probably just about dropped it. Um, since then, I've made my peace with the mandolin. But to go from, you know, kind of beginner intermediate guitar playing to, to what a mandolin requires, oh my God, it's crazy. The, the, uh, the, the neck is so small. The fret spacing is so small. The strings, oh my God. Um, so it made me appreciate the guitar is what I'm saying. But yeah, I, I highly encourage any of you guys, whether it's an inexpensive ukulele or if you decide to pony up and get a beautiful handmade mandolin or something. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and here's why, um, in, in a practical sense, for most of us, our challenges are all related to our fretting hand, right? That's the, whether it's an F chord or a certain stretch, I mean, if either every challenge or the majority of your challenges are left hand, you know, if you're right handed, left hand challenges, right? So anything that gives you related experience with your left hand is awesome. Ukulele, mandolin, uh, banjo, um, you know, there's like uh, Irish based instruments like mandolas or citerns. I mean, you guys, you name it, right? Um, any fretting that you're doing, violin, um, and anything that you're doing with your left hand on strings totally helps your guitar strings, 100%. Um, with the understanding that, you know, you spend, you know, two weeks out camping with a, with a, a ukulele, it doesn't directly make your guitar stuff sound better the day you get back. You know, if you've been working on Stairway to Heaven, you spend two weeks with a ukulele, you come back, Stairway to Heaven might not sound any better, you know. Might not sound any worse, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I, if, I'm always going to encourage you guys to grab some other instrument. If someone's going out of town and you know they're not going to be playing their ukulele for a month, man, grab it, you know, definitely. Um, you have such a huge head start on every other fretted stringed instrument, more than you know, those of you who have never tried it before. <clears throat> and, and how fun is it to say like, oh yeah, grab a ukulele. Oh, um, baritone ukulele. Head over to Sweetwater, do a search for a baritone ukulele. Baritone ukulele um, is uh, four strings tuned the same as the four skinny strings of a guitar. So everything applies. A D chord is a D chord on the baritone ukulele. An A chord is an A chord. It's all the same stuff. Um, but they're so cute. But it has to be a baritone ukulele, okay? Baritone. But the, the prices are relatively inexpensive, but you can spend a fortune. Um, so, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll uh, let you guys get... I think you're picking up on my enthusiasm for this. But before long, it's not, it's not a stretch for you to get the reputation of B 
being the person who can play anything. Oh, wow, she can play anything. Well, what that means is that she's a good guitar player and she picked up mandolin, ukulele, and banjo along the way because they're just not that different. They just aren't, you know. Um, not not like guitar and trumpet, right? You know, so yeah, go for it. Go for it. Borrow one if you can. Um, buy one if you can. Sure, why not? Well, an eye opener for me uh, as a young guy was meeting other guitar players who all played other stringed instruments. It was, I, I realized very quickly that I was the only one that didn't play another stringed instrument. Everyone I was meeting, you know, working, working musicians who would teach during the day and play gigs at night. Um, they, they all played either one or two or just everything else, but at least one other string instrument, maybe not world-class at, at a world-class level, but a perfectly competent level. It's like, well, that guy can play the banjo and that guy can play the mandolin or, you know, she can do violin and da da da. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, Susan, I don't sell banjos in my store. My store has kind of morphed over the years. Um, so now my store is where I do lessons, where I film YouTube videos. It's where I used to do the live stream until it became clear that my internet at my shop um, was not appropriate. Uh, and the internet here on my new Elm Street studio um, is, is just higher, higher uh, quality. Um, when when Frontier uh, upgrades the cable in my neighborhood down the block an eighth of a mile, um, I'll go back to I'll probably go back to doing the stuff in my own shop. So my music shop used to be more of what you think of as a music shop, where you walk in stuff to buy and lessons and stuff hanging on the wall. And um, over the years, we've toned it down. So it's it's me, man. You walk in, you got me and the crazy stuff that I hang on the walls. Um, and, uh, and in general, we don't have stuff for sale. Um, we have, uh, I try to have a few things like necessities, like some strings and picks and drumsticks and, um, but you know, never say never. Uh, so that's why I'm, I will always encourage you guys to support whatever's in your neighborhood. Um, and, uh, and if they can't help you out, then Sweetwater is a great way to go. Okay, my friends. Well, I don't know. Seven o'clock. I feel pretty good about, about what we did here today. You guys had some great questions. Thank you for uh, for joining me here on, on part two of our live stream. I don't know what happened with part one. Um, Johnny, um, I am in the state of Connecticut, USA. Um, my music shop is in the beautiful town of Old Saybrook. There is no new Saybrook. Old Saybrook, Connecticut. Uh, we are on Long Island Sound, if that is helpful information. We are about halfway in between Boston and New York. That's a good way to look at us. If you know Connecticut geography a little bit, we are halfway between New Haven and New London. Um, the town of Old Saybrook is where the Connecticut River finally joins the ocean, or at least joins Long Island Sound, right? Where the river meets the sound. Um, that's Old Saybrook, Connecticut. Nice town. Lots of pizza, lots of restaurants. If you like seafood, lots of seafood around here. Okay, my friends, let's call it. Let's call it right there. Thank you for your questions. That's why we're here. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for uh, your patience. Um, and uh, I think I'm good to go. So see you next Saturday, 5 p.m. If you think of questions during the week, make a note. Just like with my agenda, I think of something during the week. I think, ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it down so I don't forget it. Uh, I think that is all my information for you guys. Stay safe. We're expecting some snow here. Actually, it's supposed to start right about now here in Connecticut, and uh, I guess maybe a lot more snow tomorrow. So my plan tomorrow morning is timestamp this video. I try to do it the next day. Um, and then I go out and shovel snow, I guess. I'm a big fan of shoveling twice. Like if you're gonna get six inches, six inches of snow, shovel the first three inches, warm up and go back outside and shovel the next three inches. I don't know. That's, that's how I operate. So there goes my Sunday. 
That's all right. A little cup of coffee. I got some Christmas candy left over, I think. All right, you guys, thanks for being here. Keep the questions coming. I will see you next Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern. And uh, be safe out there. Make good choices. Play your guitars. And uh, I'll see you next time, everybody. Good night.